Alright, so I want to show you how to find the rate of change of a function with a linear relationship. So, we've got a function here, and I'll just tell you that it is um, it is linear. And you can, you can kind of tell that because um, the variables are first degree variables. You know, I don't have a t squared or t cubed or, you know, v to the fourth or anything like that. These are first degree. So, um, and it's a function because there's two variables that are defined in um, terms of each other. So the, the relationship between them is defined by this equation. So the rate of change is um, a comparison or a ratio of uh, the change in the um, quantity that you would graph on the y-axis of a coordinate plane over the change in what you would graph on the x-axis. So or another way to say it is um, whatever you graph um, here, the, the independent variables, in this case it would be, it'd be time. Um, uh, as this gets bigger and bigger, what's happening with y? You know, Is y increasing too? Is y decreasing? Is y just staying the same? So that's the rate of change. So I'm going to show you how to take a function like this and actually figure out what the rate of change is. So here we've got um, v equals negative 32 t plus 64. And um, these are not random numbers. This is actually um, an equation for a projectile motion. So if you like shooting stuff in the air, this, this might interest you. Um, I'm imagining kind of we're, we're, we're shooting a rocket into the air and um, looking at what happens to it. Um, OK, so we're looking at actually its speed as a function of time. And if you shoot a rock in the air, you'll know that actually it's going really fast. It slows down, stops, and then starts falling towards the Earth. So you'll see actually there's a negative rate of change here, meaning the, the velocity is um, decreasing as soon as it takes off. Um, that might be too much added information, but uh, just, just bear with me here. So OK, let's find the rate of change of this function. So what you want to do is you want to just get a couple points here so you can find the difference between the x coordinates and between the y coordinates. So um, usually whatever you graph on the x um, axis you would put on the left here and, and y you would put on the right here. So t is our independent variable. That's, th that's the number we want to plug in. So that means we'll, we'll put it there. Um, and v is the result of the function, or um, you know the output variable or the dependent variable? So that's what you would graph on the y-axis. So you put that here. Oops, that's a a v. Um, okay, so you can just pick whatever you want for the input variable. Just plug in a couple of values uh, to make things super duper easy on us, which is always a good thing. You know why overcomplicate things? I'm gonna plug in a zero and a 1. So I want to look at the speed of the rocket at time uh, equals 0 seconds and time equals 1 second. Okay, so let's plug in each of those values for um, into this equation. So um, the first case we've got the velocity of the rocket is equal to negative 32 times t, in this case z t is 0, plus 64 and so negative 32 times 0 is 0 plus 64 is equal to 64 so v is equal to 64 when time is 0 okay uh, let's plug in 1 so v equals negative negative 32 um, t and then t is going to be 1 plus 64 um, negative 32 times 1 is negative 32 um, plus 64 would be that would be the same thing as 64 minus 32 um, so that would equal 32 okay so to find the rate of change is we want to find how is V changing with respect to um, how T is changing so what we can do is find the difference in the V's 
over the difference in the t's. So we could um, so let's just find uh, the difference in the v's first. So 64 minus 32, and then the difference in the t's. So 0 minus 1, 0 minus 1. And that this ratio will tell us how the uh, y-axis variable or the output variable in this case v is changing um, versus how quickly the x-axis variable or in this case t is changing. So 64 minus 32 is 32, and 0 minus 1 is um, negative 1. And we could just simplify that to um, that would be negative 32. And um, I didn't define units here. Let's say the um, velocity we'll define in feet per second, and the time we'll do second. So um, negative 32. This top, the y is the uh, feet per second. So negative 32 feet per second, and the um, x-axis variable is seconds. So seconds. So the uh, rate of change would be negative 32 feet per second, um, per second. Okay, so you got to define your units and the rate of change there. So, and what, is, what does this actually mean? Well, it means that um, every second this rocket is slowing down by 32 feet per second. So, um, it starts off at 64 feet per second, but then after a second it's going down to, th it's down to 32 feet per second. And then after two seconds it's, it's going zero um, feet per second. So what actually it does is it goes up, stops, and then it starts having negative velocity actually when it's when it's coming down, when it's going towards the earth and then it kind of crashes there and you know smoke there. Yeah, so this is a negative rate of change. And if you were to graph it, it would look something like this. And um the point at which it has zero velocity is um when it kind of stops in the middle of the air and then goes down.